Hello everyone. It is Stephen and Andrew from Pin in the Atlas. And we are at a crossroads. Quite literally. I have no idea what route to take. Maybe that one? Or that one? Do you have any idea? That way. So we're in the middle of nowhere, Arizona, in search for a ghost town or mining camp called Signal. Now, Signal was established in 1877. That's when the post office opened. But silver was found here in 1873. Let's explore. All right, so here's a couple pieces metal that we found. I'm not sure if it's part of uh, maybe a conveyor system. If you get a closer look, you can see some of the metal has been cut out, like all this like plasma torch on that. And here's the other piece here. You can see a little bit better on the edge. That jaggedness. But you can also see the heat marks of it, those little balls of the slag that's come off to the side and, and dried when they were cutting. So yeah, unsure about that. There's another piece over there. But we we're wondering if it was part of a conveyor system. There's these pieces here. So I don't know if that's part of a belt system. Cause it's got like a canvas material and then on the back that's probably was rubber at one time. It's really, really hard now from laying out in the, the sun on the sand. So those are some of the first items. We'll see what else we can find. Yeah, and before continuing up, here's that other piece. See, it's got a bunch of holes in the top or bolts or rivets. I imagine bolts. And then there's like a like a paint thinner canister. Don't think that's what was in there, but. That's the style that a lot of people recognize. And some bullet holes. And you can see the rust is also doing a ton of damage to this. All right, now we'll continue up probably to the mill. All right, so we'll kind of show you the surrounding landscape there. Hello, Tonto. It's so nice and quiet. You can see over there the tree line. Those are up against the river. And then right down below us, looks like sand. Those are actually tailings piles. Very reminiscent of when we were at Ruby. Obviously not on the same scale. Ruby's were absolutely incredibly huge, but same kind of thing. Then another thing along the tree line. It reminds us when we're in search of Charleston. And if we continue, we believe these are the remains of a stamp mill. Let's investigate closer. All right, higher up. Give you a different perspective. 
of the remains. See like the cement blocks down there with the bolts coming out. A few bolts remain, some of them are all cracked up. Then there's some more like posts and things over on that side. This is what remains up here. See again, they've cut uh, those L metal brackets. Taking whatever machinery was on here off. There's a little bit more up there, just behind that tree. There's some like railroad ties. So we'll go check that out. And there's some more cement foundations. A lot of this is washed away. And there's more there. That to me looks like maybe the conveyor system was on there because of the angle. Like I said, we're just guessing. We don't know everything about these. We love to investigate them. So you miners out there, let us know what all this stuff is. So then for future episodes, we for sure will know what we're talking about. All right, let's climb up the hill. See, they got that rock wall. I know in the mines, when you see that, it's called gobbing. So I'm not sure if it's the same when it's outside. Let's go check it out. Made it up to the top section by all the railroad ties here. There's some metal poles sticking out. One more lumber would have been. And then looking down, I see some more timbers. So I'm gonna walk down, get a closer look. Don't know if this is an ore bin. Or what? <laughs> you, you all right? Yeah. Let's take a look in there. Very well built, very solid. I don't know how far back over there it goes. Let's take a look in this side. Oh, and that looks like the chute, it would come down. And look back over there, the other wall. It's really neat. And then here's more of that material. So this had to be a conveyor belt. So stuff would come down from up top into this bin after it was crushed. Maybe there's just holding spots and just little bits would come out at a time. Not sure. I'll watch out for nails. You, uh... On that side. No, the actual bolt has got something on it. So it says Mal or Maul number 10. Yeah, I remember seeing a lot of these. Might be around the 30s. <laughs> All right, so Andrea's just slipped. That's what the, uh, the laughing was about. Oh dear. Are you okay though? <laughs> I ended up on my bum. Yeah. 
You need a hand? No, I'm fine. All right, shall we go see what's next? <laughs> I was going to crawl in, there's a, a tin can in there, and I wanted to see what it was. Oh, okay. But uh, it doesn't look that stable. Oh, yeah, let's see what the... Oh, there is enough. Nothing worth risking my life over. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Let's explore. <laughs> <laughs> then just up and over from where we were, there's this one. And this is cool because up on the very top still has act full-sized railroad tracks up there and a metal I-beam. All the railroad ties the size of that lumber. Someone's been using it for target practice. They've climbed up and put, put a targets. Target there. There's two. There's one at the back as well. Yeah, wish people wouldn't shoot at those. Look how the walls came down. So there's a lot of force behind that because this structure is built really solid. So we'll climb up to the top, last level. Now we're above that wall that has collapsed. You can see a little bit closer some of the size of the timbers that they used. And here's the rail track, the I-beam. They meant business when they built this. So these have got to be actual two by twelves. That's pretty cool. And the last little chunk is just up at the top here. Almost there. One more look at the valley below from the top. So I've been scouring this whole area and I can't see any remnants of a mining town. And if you think about it, 800 people lived here back in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, you would think that there would have been some sort of remnants of houses. Yeah. Don't you think? Now, I do have one fun fact about this town. The storekeepers used to have to order their produce six months in advance because the location is so remote. Can you imagine that? Oh, wow. Six months in advance. That's incredible true story. But I have found something. Let's take a look. All right. Lizard. And he's gone. But yes, I found this, I take it, I don't know, it could be a water container, maybe? Yeah, that's possible. I don't think they're mining silver? Yeah, silver mine. Well, silver was discovered here in, uh, I think, 1873. 
Yeah, so I'm not sure if which one needed leach fields or anything, but I don't know if they would put that up above the mine. I think that would be dangerous. Well, this is quite new in comparison because I found a date here and a name. It says, looks like Rebel. R-E-B-E-L, that looks like an R. Yeah. Rebel Web 39. Yeah. So, and that was several years after the post office closed. So they still mined here up until, I would imagine, the, the 40s. Yeah. And the other thing I like about the miners' construction, I mean, they just used the materials they had. Like this, they used corrugated metal as their forms to pour the concrete. There's still some here. Oh, well, so yeah. What, they would just put corrugated metal either side yeah. And then pour the concrete in between. Yep, and then like these would set in once the concrete was still wet, they would just pour these in, pop those down in there, and when it cured, they're set in the concrete. Huh, interesting. Yeah. So here, yeah. And there you can see, probably just put some, drilled some holes and put tie wire through it to hold them in place while they poured. It worked. Let's see what else we can find. And this looks like it says Ralph. Is that an R? A L P H? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. 11, 9, 39. So, same year as. Uh, same as the, the other web. side, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we can find. All right, so we've driven down a little ways. You can see the timbering up on that hill. That's where we were, up at the uh, mill site. So we haven't driven all that far, but we started to see some things. And we're hoping we found the old town site. So as you can see, there's some metal cans, other pieces, but this is what really caught our eye. Right there on that tree. It's an old truck bed. And you can see how the tree is grown right out of the floor of it. So there's the wheel well. And we're finding a lot of things on the ground. Like there's some metal. That's an old uh, can key, you know, for pilchards or corned beef or something, you can see the... Oh, yeah. And you know it's an old one because it's a lot longer and mm. it's more sturdy. Those ones today yeah. are so flimsy. And look, there's pieces of pottery. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty thick. That one's uh, oh, wow. really thick. Although I don't think this has been out here that long. Wouldn't this be far dirtier? You would think so, but who knows? An old spring, spring. there. I see there's tons of cans everywhere. <laughs> a loo. Yep. That looks to be a little bit more modern. Possibly well, still used. I'm not going to try it out. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that be. There's some corrugated metal. 
over there between those bushes. It's a good place for rattlesnakes to hide. Yeah. In. And then here's a bunch more cans on the ground. There's a load more cans over there, I can see. Yeah. Here's a pile. Oh yeah, see how they were opened? The punch, the two punch holes in the top. One to pour, one to let air through. I remember doing that as a kid. More. So it's not officially a can dump, I don't think, although it's getting pretty close. It's quite a bit down here, but not as large as you would expect to see for a ghost town. Yeah. And this is still listed as a ghost town, even though there's no buildings here apart from the, the mine or the stamp mill. Yeah. Like we said before, that's the one thing we always find confusing too, because I say if there's nothing really left, don't know how you can consider that a ghost town because there's nothing there to explore. Yeah, to me, this would just be uh, mine ruins. Yeah, there's ruins of the, the mining operation. But yeah, operative word is ruins. And yeah, here's more cans. Oh. Donkey poop. I do see some foundation over there. Yeah, this is getting more like a can dump. Pick our way through here carefully. This is smaller, so what would this have been? Oh, I know what it is. That's a well. Goes down pretty deep. Wow. On closer inspection of the well, we found a date. 1933. Then I'm not sure. That might be some more foundation up over there. Shall we walk over there? Let's take a look. All right, here we go. You see right there on the road? This snake has been through here very recently. See, there's tire tracks, but it's messed up the tire tracks. So, it could be in that bush, and we will give it a wide berth. So these foundations look like they're going to drop into the wash any, any second. Another heavy rainfall. But you know, I don't know whether or not this would have been a homestead. No? Well, one, because of the concrete floor. Yeah. It's in direct line of the... I don't know what, what that is. It's not a hoist, but the yeah, mine building. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering whether or not it could have been part of the, the mining operation. That's a possibility. Because yeah, when did this place close down? Uh, in the, well the post office closed in 1932, but obviously the mine was still in operation because we saw the dates up yeah. to 1939. Mm -hmm. So it was in the 40s, I believe. Haven't been able to find an awful lot of information about it, to be quite honest. Yeah. But, so that's something else. The homes, would they have packed them up and taken them with them? Because that is what that is what happened in those days. They would uh, dismantle their homes. Yeah. Or use the... The wood for other, yeah. repurpose all the wood. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if everybody moved out of the town, there'd be no reason to leave it with all that good material lying around. 
But yeah, I was under the assumption that this was supposed to be a well-preserved ghost town. I did think that there was more buildings. That's just an old gas canister. Yeah. Gas canister that's been shot full of bullet holes. There's more cans in the bush there. But look how deep this wash is. I mean, talk about flash floods. I mean, yeah. maybe some of the buildings have got washed away. That is a possibility because that cause it, it is really wide and uh, the walls built up on the sides are quite steep. See now this piece of glass is really thick. It's the base of a, of a bottle or a jar. It's very weighty and it's quite thick. Can't tell what it is. It's got a little emblem on it. It says 22 and the number four, but I uh, don't know what that is. Hmm. And more cans and metal everywhere. And this old tin still has the screw top lid on it. All right, so we've done a lot more walking around. We found another little can dump over on the other side. Close to the base of the mountain where the, the mining operation took place. Nothing like the can dump at Lake Valley. No, that one was very extensive. Now there should be a cemetery around here somewhere, you would have thought. I mean, if people were living here for 40, 50 years. Yeah. So I had no idea where the cemetery could be. And sometimes they're like a mile away from the town. Yeah. Like the one at Ruby was quite a, quite a distance from it. Mm. All right, here we are, day two. We went back, found some place nice to stay that had some internet access. Just about 10 miles from here, up the canyon a little way, so we could get some signal. And did a little bit more research. And got on Google Earth. And just across the wash from where we were at the Signal Town site, we believe this is what remains of the sister city, Virginia City. Which is now, as you can see, an archaeological site. So obviously this looks like the remains of the mill. more primitive than the uh, the one at Signal. All stone foundations. Very nicely done. And over here to the left. shoot some more metal pieces down here and up there some more remains a little bit of cement work here the rest. It's a pretty cool find. We'll walk around the grounds. See if there's any, oh, hang on. Oh, 
that's still embedded, but I'm gonna get out of the way. That's a big bolt. Okay, there's some more down over here. We'll go take a look. Also, it's really cool to keep an eye out because you never know what you're gonna walk across. This old pocket knife is just laying here on the ground. Don't know where it originated from. It's like I said, this is a wash, but it was just sitting right here on top. Really cool find. And then Andrea found this one. Piece of pottery has kin, we can read. There's a little logo up above it. That's why we always scan the ground when we're out in these areas. One for snakes, spiders, scorpions, all those gnarly things, but also you never know what you're gonna find. But like the sign said, this is an archeological site, so. There's the mill site in the background. We have found the last piece of the puzzle. You know, any ghost town is not complete without a cemetery. Shall we go in and take a look? Yeah. So this is really nice. It's been, it's actually being maintained by the Americans. MC. Motor motorcycle Club. Oh, that's really lovely. Now, as from what I've read, there's 60 some odd graves here, but there's only about six or eight marked. So, uh, let's take a look. You got those lovely wind chimes. And as we were looking at this, we're kind of... There's a huge cross right in the middle. Yeah. And there's tiny ones, so I don't know if the different sizes signifies children from adults. I think the very small ones do. But let's have a look and see. So this is the grave site for Signal and I believe Virginia City. Well, they did surprisingly well for both of the, the towns. For only 68 graves. Yeah. More people than that must have died, though. Now, let's go up and read. Innocent H. Olia, Arizona. Private 318. He Infantry. must have died in the Second World War. Yep, World War II, December 28th, 1919. Born. Perished December 5th, 1944. Very young. Yeah. Thank you for your service. This one's got a little sheep above it. Mother A. S. Olea, 1845 to 1911. This must be a family plot for Olea. Yeah, because here's also sister of Y. S. Olea. And there's another sister on the other side there with the same. And then some of these graves are newer. 1881 to 1968. That's well after the ghost towns closed down. Yeah. July 5th. So that's June and how would you pronounce that? Yesidro. Yesidro. So I wonder if that was husband and wife. They died very close together, and that's June H. O'Lear. 
Now this one here is a lot newer. Frank O'Lear, 1915 to 1973. And this one, wow, let me get out of the shadow. 1998. So people are obviously still being buried here in the family plots. Yeah. So if you see some of the smaller crosses, the graves are a lot smaller, so I'm wondering whether or not that depicts children. Yeah, that makes sense. This little one here doesn't have anything. It's a shame that so many of them are unmarked. Yeah. But I wonder why that huge cross in the middle, I wonder what that signifies. I don't know. And then have you seen this one? This one's one of the original. This is really natty. 1810 to 1880, is that an eight? Yeah, 88, 78 years old. And that's A. Levius. Le Levius. Lavius. And it's been made with marbles. How wonderful is that? Lavius as well, so this must be another little family plot. Mother Reyes B. Livus? I don't know. Levis, Livus. Livus, Levis. 1836 to 1927. Beautiful wind This one's got a strange marking. Fernando, is that Dras? Dras? And then 1912, and then there's some numbers missing, and then 128. Strange. Would that be something to do with military, or...? I have no idea. I've not seen anything like that before. Unfortunately, all the others are unmarked. And all the graves are facing east-west. Now, apparently, there is rumoured to be a second graveyard. It's never been confirmed, but it's rumoured that there's a second graveyard of Chinese. They believe, if it's true, that the Chinese were buried nearer the wash, mm. and because of all the flooding, it washed them away. But there's no actual documents confirming that. Right. All right, that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching us explore the ruins of the Signal Mine and Ghost Town. Yeah, it's a shame it wasn't more of a ghost town as far as more buildings to explore. But that's the thing, whenever we go out, we don't really know quite what we're going to find. Yeah, uh, we like to leave it as a surprise, and sometimes this is what happens. 
But on that note, get out there, go and explore, put another pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye.